You may have seen the first episode of my eGPU adventures with the 2013 Mac Pro, in which I did some benchmarks with Unigen Valley. And in those benchmarks, I only showed the performance of the eGPU. So I thought it'd be good to do a quick follow-up video with some benchmarks of the internal graphics cards for comparison. If you haven't seen that episode, it also contains an overview of eGPU options for Mac and a guide to setting up an eGPU with the 2013 Mac Pro over Thunderbolt 2. And I did some comparisons with my MacBook Pro 13 inch using the same eGPU and the same graphics card. Um, my aim in that video really was to show the difference in performance between Thunderbolt 2 and Thunderbolt 3, uh, but I realized it would also be useful to see how much additional performance the eGPU gives you over the internal graphics cards. Now, this video was partly prompted by a comment from Michael Timpson. Thanks, Michael. Uh, now, he posed the following questions. Question number one, what would the benchmarks have been if you ran them using the internal GPU in the Mac Pro? Yeah, good question. So let's have a look. And I'm again going to use the Unigine Valley benchmark with the Extreme HD preset. So this means the highest detail settings and eight times anti-aliasing switched on. Now, my 2013 Mac Pro has the dual D300 GPUs and it managed 23.9 frames per second with a score of 999. And I ran the same benchmark again with the same settings using the eGPU and I got 67.1 frames per second and a score of 2,806. My eGPU has a Radeon RX 5700 XT Nitro Plus card in it. Now I'll put all of these results on a comparison card at the end of the video. Let's move on to question two. Michael asks, why can't the Mac Pro use both internal GPUs and are there any applications that can? Now Michael is asking this because in the previous video I stated that the benchmark software would only use one of the internal GPUs on the Mac Pro. Um, but in actual fact, I'm not sure that I was correct in saying that. But I've not been able to find anything definitive to say whether or not Unigine Valley is multi-GPU aware. Now it may be combining the D300s, but I'm fairly confident that it won't combine the internal GPUs with the external GPU to boost performance, at least based on the tests I've done. Uh, even though it does show all of the GPUs inside the machine on the results page. The 2013 Mac Pro uses one of its GPUs for display purposes and the other for compute tasks. And the cards are actually connected using AMD's Crossfire X technology. So if you install Windows on your Mac Pro, you'll find that you can make use of that. But in Mac OS, the implementation is not straightforward and it requires developers to write code specifically to take advantage of the compute GPU. And since this didn't get widespread support, it's true to say that the compute card sits idle most of the time, and that's pretty frustrating. But there are apps that can use both of the cards. Final Cut Pro is an example of this. And when they are working together, it's a pretty decent solution, even in 2020. Apple thought GPU computing was going to become a thing, and of course they've since admitted that it was a mistake. So let's move on to question three. What is the benchmark using the integrated GPU in the MacBook Pro? Now my MacBook Pro 13 inch is the 2018 four port edition with the top of the range Core i7-8559U CPU. And this features Iris Plus Graphics 655 and the graphics performance sucks. It's really rubbish. It stumbled along at 7.8 frames per second and scored a poultry 327. The brand new 2020 MacBook Pro 13 inch with that 10th generation CPU would probably perform much better. But even so, I doubt you're gonna see more than about 15 frames per second, if that. But if anyone has one of those latest edition laptops and feels like sharing the benchmark, that would be quite interesting to know. Uh, now by comparison, if we plug in the eGPU, the frame rate jumps up to 82.6 and the score is 3,457. Obviously it's faster than the Mac Pro because we have Thunderbolt 3. Now question four is a good one. What is the benchmark using the MacBook Pro with the eGPU, but using the built-in monitor? Now accelerating the internal display of your MacBook Pro is something that the eGPU can do, uh, but I found I had to specifically tell each app to prefer the eGPU, and otherwise it would just use the internal card. Uh, bear in mind also that the 13-inch display doesn't run 1080p, 
It does have enough pixels in theory to do it, but I'd need to install some sort of third party tool, which I didn't want to do. So I ran the benchmark at 1680 by 1050. And again, uh, with the highest quality and with eight times anti-aliasing. The frame rate was 57.8 and it scored 2418. So it's quite a drop off between the external monitor and accelerating the internal display. And I explained this in my previous video, but a quick explanation is that we're not only sending data to the eGPU, we are receiving it back again. And that just uses more of the bandwidth that's available in the cable and it slows down performance. So for comparison purposes, I ran the benchmark again using that Iris Plus 655 GPU at the 1680 by 1050 resolution and it managed 9.1 frames per second with a score of 382. So slightly better than the 1080p result. Uh, considering the bottleneck, we aren't getting anywhere near the full performance of the 5700 XT GPU. So if all you want to do is accelerate your MacBook display, don't go wasting your money on a top-end GPU. Something like Sonic's breakaway puck with an RX 560 is probably going to be fairly close on performance uh, due to that cable bottleneck. And finally, I think it's important to bear in mind that the Unigine Valley benchmark is an old benchmark. I think it was released in 2013. And it uses OpenGL, not Apple's newer Metal framework. So because of this, we shouldn't use these benchmarks to determine the absolute performance of the GPU because it's not really an accurate reflection. Uh, for example, I ran the benchmark on my gaming PC, which also has an RX 5700 XT. And using the DirectX framework under Windows, it scored 108 frames per second. Why would we want to use this benchmark then if it's so out of date? Well, it, simply it's still a useful tool to stretch your GPU and provide some points of comparison. And actually I still see tech YouTubers using the Unigine Heaven benchmark for the same reason, and that's much older. Now here comes that comparison card. Hit the pause button if you want to look at the results in detail. Anyway, that's it for this video. Episode two of my eGPU journey with the 2013 Mac Pro will be coming in the next couple of weeks. And I'll be looking at performance in pro apps for image and video editing. So if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, you know what to do. And be sure to hit the bell so you'll be notified when that next episode is live. And please leave a comment below if you have any thoughts or anything you'd particularly like me to try. Uh, I can't promise to cover all of the suggestions, but I'll always do what I can. Hopefully I did enough to earn a thumbs up, but if not, you can use that other button. In any case, I'll see you next time for some more geekery.